How Groundhog's Garden Grew by Lynn Cherry. Little Groundhog was hungry. Beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible, he exclaimed as he crept into a neighbor's lovely vegetable garden. He was nibbling on some fresh green lettuce when Squirrel rushed down from her tree. What other animals do you see here? Little Groundhog Squirrel scolded. This food does not belong to you. If you take food that belongs to others, you will not have a friend in the world. Why don't you plant your own garden? I'm sorry, Little Groundhog told her, embarrassed, but I don't know how. Well then, replied Squirrel, I will show you. What vegetables do you see here? First you will need seeds, said Squirrel. Little Groundhog helped Squirrel and her friends pick beans and peas from pods and seeds from a sunflower's drooping head. They collected seeds from inside peppers, cantaloupe, cucumber, and tomatoes. Squirrel chewed a hole in the pumpkin and handed Little Groundhog the gooey seeds, saying, We'll dry these in the sun, then we can plant them in the spring. Weeks later, after winter, he awoke with a start. It's spring, he shouted, and he scuttled up to the burrow entrance. There he met Squirrel carrying the burlap sack that they had filled with potatoes and the tins of seeds. Rise and shine, Squirrel said. It's planting time. Look, the potatoes are sprouting. See the little sprouts on the potatoes? First we'll cut them into little pieces with two sprouts each. Then we'll plant them with their sprouts pointing up and cover them with soil. Each sprout will grow into a new potato plant. Next fall, we'll dig new potatoes out of the ground. Now let's find a sunny place for your garden. When they found a good spot, Squirrel told Little Groundhog, first we need to dig the, in the soil to loosen it up. Next, they planted the cut up potatoes then they dug rows and sprinkled in carrots, beets, parsnip, and radish seeds. All of these vegetables will grow under the ground, Squirrel told him, so we call them root crops. They covered the seeds with dirt and gently watered them. At the end of each row, Squirrel stuck markers to help them remember what they had planted. Squirrel told Little Groundhog, plants need lots of sun. We'll plant taller vegetables in the back so they won't cast a shadow over the shorter ones. So behind the rows of root crops, they planted seeds of tomatoes, peppers, and leafy greens. Some vegetables grow on vines, said Squirrel. She pounded sticks into the ground for the pea and bean plants to climb. Some plants grow very big, said Squirrel. They planted the seeds of the pumpkins, zucchini, yellow squash, sunflowers, corn, and artichokes far apart to give them lots of room to grow. Every day, Little Groundhog watched and waited and watered his garden. Then one day, tiny seedlings emerged. What a wonder, he exclaimed. But as they grew, he worried. Are these seedlings too crowded together? What should I do? He asked Squirrel. Pull up some and plant them somewhere else, she said. Little Groundhog pulled up a few seedlings and looked at them. The peas and the beans and all of the seeds had split open from each root. It grew down and a shoot grew up. Little Groundhog transplanted some seedlings where they had more room to grow. That's the end for now, but we'll take a look at this book again.